Hello and welcome to this quick microfogger tutorial. Today we're going to be showing you how to disassemble the microfogger to the point where you'll be able to fully clean it and rinse out any fog liquid which may have entered the insides of the case uh, due to incorrect use or incorrect filling. In order to start, you will first have to watch our video about opening up the top cover of the microfogger. Uh, and once you've watched that and completed the steps mentioned in that video, you will have your microfogger with the top cover off. Please note that the video uh, that this video only applies to the microfogger 3 Pro and the microfogger 3 Lite, as those are the only two versions which are user serviceable for full cleaning. You won't need many tools to complete this procedure, you'll just need some uh, needle nose pliers and you may want to have some paper towels handy. So let's get started. First of all, let's remove the uh, fog liquid tank from the microfogger by simply unscrewing it uh, as you would normally to refill it and also removing the heating oil. So uh, using a paper towel, just carefully take the heating coil out of the device and just wipe away any excess uh, fog liquid which you may have remaining on the microfogger. Next, take the uh, needle nose pliers which you have and gently insert them into the area between the uh, fan and the circuit board. So simply go ahead and place them in like this and gently pu uh, pull them up. You'll see that the circuit board immediately pivots out, so gently grab it with your fingers, taking care not to touch the top side of the circuit board, uh, only the edges, and pull it out. You'll see that the, micro, uh, that the circuit board immediately unseats itself. Next, gently grab the connector, the fan connector, which is the small one on the side here, and pull it. Try to only pull it uh, using the uh, white tab. Uh, don't actually pull the wires as this can result in permanent damage. Sometimes you want, uh, sometimes if it is tight, you may want to use your needle nose pliers once again to carefully pull it out if it is uh, too tight to do so with your hands. That is the fan connector disconnected. Next, let's disconnect the battery. This is fairly simple. Uh, you'll notice that there is a larger white connector here. So in order to unclip it, simply uh, push down on the tab and pull it out. Of course, as I should have mentioned a little bit earlier, the microfogger has to be off during this entire procedure just to make sure uh, that no errors occur. Once we've got those uh, two connectors disconnected, uh, you'll want to disconnect the uh, two wires which go to the switch on the underside of the microfogger. This is quite simple and generally you should be able to pull these wires out with a little bit of force. So that goes one and there goes the other. If you notice uh, that they are a little bit too tight, you may want to remove the uh, plastic covering here, the plastic insulation, and gently push on this small little tab while pulling up. Uh, usually this isn't required, but if it is very tight, you may want to consider doing so. Now, gently push the circuit board to the side, uh, move the fan connector off in a direction which will not inhibit the battery from coming out, and gently pulling on the battery uh, leads, just pull it up. This should not require much force, and if you notice there uh, being excessive force, just stop and email us and we would advise you on how to proceed. But generally, it shouldn't be uh, too hard to take it out. Um, once you have the battery out, if you notice that there's any fog liquid on the battery, uh, just go ahead and wipe it off using any uh, using a paper towel. Make sure not to uh, get this battery wet. Uh, don't try to rinse the battery off uh, using uh, your uh, just a water faucet. Uh, that would not be good for the battery. Uh, only use the paper towels with the battery. Uh, once we have the battery disconnected, just gently make sure that the leads aren't touching and set it off to the side. Next, let's remove the fan from the case. This is quite simple. Go ahead and grab the fan using 
uh, your fingers here and just push it off to the side and then up. It should come out very simply, uh, very nice and easily. Uh, so just set that off to the side. Once you've done that, you are now able to rinse off the entire uh, case and the circuit board of the microfogger off uh, using a faucet uh, with some just clean, cold running water. Uh, even though this is a circuit board, it shouldn't damage the circuit board. And as long as you allow uh, the case and the circuit board to dry out for two to three days after rinsing it off, uh, this will cause no damage to the circuit board. It'll just help you remove any fog liquid which may be on the inside of the case. Similarly, you can rinse off the uh, fan using some clean, cold running water. Uh, just make sure to leave it uh, out to dry in a nice warm place for at least two to three days. Um, turning the microfogger on or plugging in the fan or the battery into the uh, circuit board before the uh, circuit board has had a chance to dry off will cause problems and may cause permanent damage. So just make sure that you have let it uh, dry out properly for at least a few days. A few helpful tips we have uh, when cleaning the microfogger when rinsing it off uh, using water would be to make sure that water goes into the fan inlet port. Uh, that way, if there's any fog liquid in there, that'll be washed away. Uh, and similarly, just make sure that you're cleaning uh, rinsing uh, the fan out properly. So just make sure a nice stream of water goes in there uh, to fully clean the insides. Uh, when you're gonna be drying the uh, fan and the case, just make sure that you're putting the case up in this orient, uh, the fan up in this orientation and the case up in this orientation, just to make sure that the evaporating water uh, has a good chance of uh, evaporating from all of the areas here as placing it this way would not yield uh, such a good uh, evaporating uh, environment. Once uh, you've gone ahead and waited for the recommended two to three days of uh, drying, you can go ahead and start reassembling the microfogger. Uh, this procedure would just be the exact same one that we've uh, completed, but in reverse. Uh, so take your fan and uh, placing it in at an angle. So go ahead and make sure it is being placed at an angle. Uh, just place it back into the same cavity from where it came out of, uh, making sure that the uh, wires coming out of the middle are aligning with the port on the uh, inside of the microfiber. Uh, making sure that it is still at an angle, just push it down, and once you hear a click and see that it is flush, push it to the side uh, in the same position uh, in which it was before. Uh, now move the fan cable off to the side, making sure that it is following uh, this relief on the inside of the case uh, and not in this position as this will cause problems later with the battery. So just make sure it looks sort of like this and take the battery. Uh, this procedure is a little bit uh, more complicated, but uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. Just go ahead and take the battery at a approximate 45 degree angle and insert it in the, into the case of the microfogger as shown, making sure that it slides all the way backwards uh, in this direction. Uh, until it hits the end stop. Now gently uh, bend the connector back, uh, the wires back up and start pushing the uh, this end of the battery uh, while keeping this end down. Um, this may take a few tries, but gently push it down, making sure not to uh, damage the wires which are coming out of it. Once you've pushed the battery in, just make sure it is in all the way and is uh, parallel to the bottom of the case. Um, you should notice that the uh, fan connector is coming out of the uh, area where the switch is located. Next, go ahead and connect the uh, short lead of the battery to the rear connector um, area on the switch. Uh, this connector can be connected either way, uh, so it does not matter as long as the long side of the connector is matching up with the long side of the switch. Uh, so just go ahead and make sure it is pushed in all the way. You may hear a click, but you should definitely feel uh, that you are unable to push it any further. Uh, next, take the 
uh, longer lead of the uh, battery, the black battery connector, and put it onto the front connector of the switch as shown. Uh, next, just gently push the uh, connectors down to make sure that they are out of the way uh, for when the circuit board is connected. Uh, next, just reconnect the battery connector, making sure that it is off, that the switch is off. Uh, reconnect the battery connector to the circuit board. Uh, and then simply connect the fan connector to the circuit board as well. For both of these connectors, uh, just remember the way they were when uh, you disconnected them, as they will need to be placed in the exact same orientation. Um, so the fan connector, it'll only go in it one way. Uh, make sure that both these connectors are securely fastened, uh, and you should hear clicks when they are in all the way. Uh, next, just push the front of the circuit board in and push it down. You should hear a click when it is seated in place. Uh, the rear of the circuit board uh, should also go down in the same way as the front. Just make sure that the wires on the inside are out of the way and not touching the sides of the case as that is where the uh, holding uh, positions are for the PCB. Uh, so just gently push the wires out of the way and push the rear of the circuit board in, and that is it. Uh, you've gone ahead and just cleaned the microfogger, and we've just shown you how to reassemble it. Next, you'll want to reassemble uh, the top cover uh, just by following the reverse instructions of the aforementioned video, and place the heating coil back on. Uh, once again, I would just like to stress the importance of making sure that the uh, microfogger is fully dry before uh, you use it. Depending on the humidity and temperature of your environment, you may want to wait for a longer time uh, after rinsing out the circuit board and the fan. Uh, sometimes this can take up to five days. Uh, just make sure you're using your best judgment and if you see any moisture uh, remaining on the circuit board, uh, the case or the fan, uh, just go ahead and leave it out for a few more days to make sure that it is fully dry. After conducting a full clean of the microfogger, any problems which you may have been experiencing with it in the past uh, should go away and it should start working correctly uh, once again. In order to prevent uh, fog liquid from ever getting back into the case, just make sure that you're following the guidance in the instructions, especially about uh, tapping out or flicking out any excess liquid uh, after using it. Uh, and of course, just make sure that you are filling it correctly, making sure that no liquid uh, gets into the central cavity of the heating coil, uh, which can once again cause fog liquid to drip down inside the case. If you have any questions or comments about uh, this procedure, just be sure to leave them in the comment section down below, and we'll do our best to address or answer any questions you may have. Uh, thank you for watching.